the adaptive vertebrate immune system is one of the most amazingly complex products of evolution that I know of. And at its heart is the process of clonal selection of antigen receptors. It provides the conceptual framework of adaptive immunity. Every T or B cell bears a single type of antigen receptor that has a unique specificity. When a foreign antigen binds to a receptor, it activates that lymphocyte. The lymphocyte then multiplies to form a clone of effector cells that have identical receptor specificity. Lymphocytes that have affinity for self-antigen are deleted early in development, and that largely prevents autoimmune disease. Here is a first picture of how clonal selection works. So on the left side, we see a single progenitor cell. It gives rise to many lymphocytes. They undergo somatic recombination so that each of them is expressing a different antibody. And that you can see by the array of colors there on the left-hand side. Somatic recombination is being done by shuffling these inherited gene segments. These exist as gene families, and at each of the loci, there are many alleles present in the, comp in the population. So every individual is usually heterozygous for many of these loci, and that is what generates the recombinatory power of this process of first generating a huge amount of diversity and then selecting on it. During this process, the cells that are expressing self-antigen that could cause autoimmune diseases are eliminated. And that gives a pool of mature na naive lymphocytes which potentially could react with foreign antigens but not with self. Then they encounter a foreign antigen and one of them, the purple one in this case, actually ha expresses an antibody that binds to it. It is then activated and multiplies and it forms a clone of effector cells. And the fact that each of them is expressing that specific antibody is indicated by the fact that all of these are purple here. So the chains that are produced are pairing to form a unique receptor for each lymphocyte. You can see that this lymphocyte is expressing exactly the same receptor on its surface. This is a different lymphocyte with a different set of somatically recombined proteins, somatically recombined genes producing proteins, which are being expressed on the surface of this different lymphocyte. The lymphocyte antigen receptors in mammals are generated by somatic gene rearrangements, gene conversion, nucleotide additions at the ends of gene segments, and random pairing of two polypeptides to form antigen receptors or antibodies. These random processes produce this initial huge array of diverse receptors, which look like this. Okay, so let's recap antibody structure here. We've seen it before. An antibody is a Y-shaped protein. It is extruded from the cell. It's sitting on the surface of a cell and exposed to the outside. It binds to a particular antigen with a region that contains both a variable light chain and a variable heavy chain. So these are the two parts of this molecule which exist in gene, many forms in gene families, in, coded in gene families in the genome, and whose somatic recombination then determines the diversity of antibodies available. Now antibodies defend their hosts in three ways. They bind directly to viruses and to bacterial toxins, preventing the entry of viruses into cells and damping the activity of toxins. They coat the surface of pathogens, that's called opsonization, so that they can then be eaten and killed by macrophages. This is also done by complement. They activate complement proteins, so they trigger this activation, and the complement then complements the activity of the antibodies encoding extracellular pathogens for consumption by macrophages. 
So this is what makes blood plasma such a dangerous environment for pathogens. However, intracellular parasites, those not in the bloodstream, require special treatment. Cells infected by viruses use MHC1 molecules to present viral fragments on their surface that activate cytotoxic T cells that kill the cells that are infected by the viruses. Macrophages that ingest leprosy or tuberculosis pathogens, both of those are bacteria, use MHC2 molecules to transfer bacterial fragments to their surface where they recruit helper T cells that detect the antigen and present it to B cells. Those B cells are then recruited and magnified by clonal selection to produce huge quantities of specific antibodies. There are several immune defense strategies. First, kill bacterial and fungal pathogens with phagocytes, antimicrobial peptides and proteins, and the complement system. In other words, eat poison or smother them. Secondly, eliminate infected cells with cytotoxic lymphocytes. These are typically virally infected cells and cells that are infected with intracellular bacteria and protozoa. Third, expel multicellular parasites by mucosal epithelia, mast cells, and basophils. All of these defenses have associated costs. Each has its own associated immunopathology and corresponding types of autoimmune and allergic disease. Type 1 immune responses are, are associated with allergy. That's immunoglobulin E and mast cell mediated. So for example, this includes food allergies and asthma. Type 2 immune responses, cytotoxic, this is, is, are mediated by lymphocytes, by complement and antibody. And that can result in autoimmune hemolytic anemia and in thrombocytopenia. Type 3 immune responses are mediated by the immune complex. So this is the antibody antigen complex and results in diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. The type 4 immune response is T cell mediated and it, its vulnerability, its cost is multiple sclerosis. So to summarize, Adaptive immunity increases the range of protection against pathogens and it adds memory. Clonal selection produces large populations of cells that can produce antibodies with identical specificity in large quantities. Intracellular parasites get special treatment. Antibodies have multiple functions. Each defense strategy has corresponding types of autoimmune and allergic diseases.